Welcome to the Falcon Focus Podcast, our first of the 2018-19 school year, and we come to you from our brand new home here at the Falcon's Nest, the Student Union, and we'll be live with you on Facebook Live every Tuesday from 9.30 to 10 a.m., and you can also watch this podcast in the archives. You can find the link at cwfalcons.com, and then the Podbean website, which also can be found in the link via the newly renovated CUW Falcons. Dot com. But my name is Matt Menzel, and every week we will recap the week that was and preview the week that will be in Falcon Athletics. We'll also be joined by a couple of guests. And on our main voyage of this new school year, we'll be joined by field hockey junior midfielder Sam Dunn. We'll also talk football as they get ready for their home opener against Augsburg on Saturday. We'll talk with the Concordia football associate head coach, special teams coordinator, wide receiver coach. He's also the recruiting coordinator, jack of all trades, that being Jeff Walker. But before we get to our guests, let's recap the week that was, the first week of the school year athletically. And things got underway on Friday with men's soccer, picking up a home victory as they knocked off the Beloit College Buccaneers by a 1-0 final. And for the Falcon men's soccer team, their fourth consecutive season opening victory, all four of those wins via a shutout. Got a goal in the 15th minute by Christian Turpak, assisted by Simon Da Silva in a game that would see Ryan Kreiser, a former field player, start as the goalkeeper. He's now a goalkeeper in his senior year. He came through with a save as the Falcons were plus 16 at shots at 19 to three. Women's tennis won their third consecutive season opener. They knocked off Carroll University. They did so six to three. They have now extended their home win streak to nine. In men's golf, weather became a factor this weekend, but able to finish eighth out of 20 schools. They shot 311, that in men's golf at the Culver's Edgewood Fall Classic. Again, only one round completed. The second round was canceled due to weather. Sam Slosser individually, he finished 13th. He shot a 75. Andrew Otto, as far as the men's golf team goes, he finished one stroke back, shooting a 76. On Saturday in women's soccer, it was a back and forth battle in their home opener against Franklin College out of Indiana. Five to four loss against the Grizzlies, but again, they'll see the Falcons down two nothing, up four to two. And all of a sudden, Franklin came back, scored three unanswered. Falcons had an opportunity to tie the game late, missed a penalty kick. And again, they would see Franklin play a man down for the last seven to eight, thanks to a direct red card. Overall shots were at 16 to 15 in favor of Concordia. Goal scored by Ashley Johnson, Kylie Harmon, along with Isabel Downs and Shannon Carroll. In women's golf, they were able to get their event in both Friday and Saturday. They finished 13th out of 17 schools at the Carthage Shootout on the border. End up shooting 385 in the first round, 390 in the second round for a grand total of 775. In volleyball, they had the CIT for yet a third consecutive year, bringing home that CIT Volleyball Championship. Took place this past weekend from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And for the volleyball team, what a stretch. They play their first 10 away from the John Book Fieldhouse. And well, in Ann Arbor, Michigan on Saturday, able to knock off Ann Arbor three sets to one before sweeping Concordia Chicago three sets to none for that CIT title. Holly Anderson led the team in kills in both of those matchups. She had nine and 19 respectively. In the two matches as a whole, the Falcons had 23 total service aces and 16 total blocks. Monday, triathlon was in action on Labor Day. Yes, they were busy on Labor Day finishing third out of six at the North Central Invitational. And as mentioned, we'll be talking field hockey in a second. They're off to a 2-0 start for a second consecutive year, third year of the program's existence. Able to take care of business from Oberlin, Ohio, as they knocked off Farrell 7-2 on Saturday. Sam Dunn will be our guest, one of the two Falcons with hat-trick performances. She had three goals. Megan McPike also with three goals before the team would then, the next day, knock off Oberlin 2-1. The game-winning goal scored by Megan McPike. 59-18 with the time of that game-winning goal. And then finally, football. As mentioned, we'll talk with Jeff Walker in a little bit as well. Football, they're coming off a victory for a third consecutive year over the Finlandia Lions. They have beaten the Lions now three straight years by a combined score of 104-23, to winning the latest edition by the final of 31-3. to A heck of a showing which Aaron Nixon at quarterback. He is back. He is healthy. He threw for 310 yards. He also threw four touchdowns. But when we come back here on the Falcon Focus podcast, we'll talk field hockey. In their 2-0 start, as again, we'll be joined by junior midfielder Sam Dunn. Stay tuned or tune in to the Falcon Focus podcast.
Welcome back to the Falcon Focus podcast from our home here at the Student Union, the Falcon's Nest. Every Tuesday we'll be live on Facebook Live, and again, the archives can be found on cwfalcons.com. And we we'll joined by our first of two guests, that being the junior midfielder for the field hockey team, Sam Dunn. And Sam, first of all, thanks for your time. You know, from a high school standpoint, you went to Arrowhead High School, they call, at least around here, the University of, <laughs> big school, but uh, you play two sports that are still relatively new to the area, that being field hockey and lacrosse. What attracted you to those two sports? Um, I guess it was the relatively being new to, you know, Wisconsin and me just wanting to kind of start a new thing. You know, I was in softball when I was in middle school, so I wanted to try something new, change it up. So I started with field hockey, you know, got really interested in that um, through a couple of friends. So joined that, got um, fell in love with the sport instantly, so did that in high school. And then a couple of my friends then transferred over from field hockey to lacrosse because they're relatively similar. Um, and so then I decided to give that a shot and fell in love with that as well. And of course, from a field hockey standpoint at that school, you guys had a lot of success. Yes, we were. Uh, we went to state all four years, um, being runners up for two of them and then winning the championship for the other two. So it was very exciting. Yeah. I know at least at that school you have big rivals in other sports like a Catholic Memorial and so on and so forth, Waukesha West. How about in field hockey? Do you guys have a big rival? Yes, the University School of Milwaukee. We are huge rivals. Actually, we went to um, state with them a couple of years. Um, it's just always intense. The game is just so much better because, you know, with the rivalry. So it was always fun, though. So from high school to Concordia, was that an easy decision as far as going the field hockey route? Were you kind of, you know, debating field hockey, lacrosse? How'd that come about? Um, so I knew that I wanted to be in field hockey. It was kind of debating with lacrosse, but ended up wanting to just stick with one sport. Um, wanted to be close to home, and then my club coach, Sam Landis, um, she introduced me to Concordia, said that we're getting a new program there, so I was like, I jumped right on that right away. Wanted to be close to home, so. You mentioned new program. You were part of that first ever field hockey team in 2016. What memories do you have from that first season? Oh, you know, just the love of the sport, have, being the underdog all the time, you know, um, coming up with a couple wins, just turning heads, all the coaches saying that we worked hard every single game. It was just a great experience and getting our foot in the door with the program. One of the matches that stands out from that first season, October 14, 2016, you guys were at home for the first time against Lindenwood Belleville, a 6 nothing Falcon victory. But, you know, besides the win itself, it was the second largest crowd to ever witness a Division Three field hockey matchup. You had three assists in that, that win from Tomasini Stadium. What do you remember about that day? Oh, I just remember, you know, looking in the stands and seeing the stands completely packed, you know. Field hockey is not normally a um, sport that you get that many people coming to your game. So just the fact that so many people showed up to support our game and support the school in general, it was just such a great experience. So is it special, at least to you, to say that, hey, you were part of and will forever be known as one of the first members of the first ever field hockey team in school history? Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, no one's going to forget you. No one's going to forget the team that started the program. So it's always great to be a part of something, you know, history in the making. You had four goals, five assists that first season, including the game-winning goal against Ohio Wesleyan. And so then all of a sudden, on to year number two, last fall, you became the program's first-ever all-region selection. You were also with the field hockey team joining a conference, a first-team all-Southern Athletic Association honoree, three goals, three assists. But what's it mean to you to, to be selected you know, by your peers, by the, you know, the various teams, by those in the area as an all-region selection? It just shows that you know hard work and determination will get you success, and just seeing that my my hard work has um, become successful, just you know getting again getting the name out there for Concordia is just a huge thing for me. Did did, did it surprise you at all when that honor came out, or did yeah. you were you kind of hoping? I actually didn't even know that they had an all region <laughs> selection, so you know seeing that um, in the news article was just brightened up my day. Maybe so. So now you're a junior, what was the off-season focus? You prepared for this season, did you, did you focus on any one area of your game? What was kind of your mindset? Um, my mindset was mental toughness, focusing on that, focusing on, you know, we have a small team, we need to make sure our legs are strong, we need to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, it's just focusing on that team aspect, really, getting everybody in this, on the same page. So. Tell us about this year's team. You look at the breakdown, there are four freshmen, a couple of sophomores, you have six juniors, one senior. Certainly there's experience, but there's also some youth there. Yes, very young. Um, but all of the freshmen that came in are really excited and really determined to have a great season this year. So, 
your takeaways from this past week and how you thought the team looked. Obviously, coming away with two victories, you had a hat-trick performance against Ferrum on uh, Saturday, but your thoughts on the way the team looked? Well, I came into the came into the weekend knowing that we were confident and we were, you know, confident that we were going to be winning both games. So I guess just continuing with that confidence, I thought that, um, you know, we were going to obviously win and I want to continue that on for the next couple of weeks. You guys are road warriors. No question, we look at the first three years, a lot of road games, only in fact one home date this season, which comes your way October 17th against the Paw at Tomasini Stadium. What are some of the challenges? Or, or is it, you know, maybe not a challenge, but maybe is it is it exciting, you know, get on the bus and get to know your teammates as well as you guys probably get to know each other through the course of a, a road-filled schedule? Yeah, definitely the team, team chemistry is going to be very tight. Um, just being on the bus for how many hours. Um, it is tough, you know, being on the bus for so long, and um, as the season goes on, it gets a little tougher, but just having that mental toughness to um, continue to play our best while traveling so much. I take you guys watch a lot of movies. Yes. <laughs> Is there any go-to for you guys? Is there... Um, Coach Carter for sure. Okay, Big Coach one. Carter. <laughs> and you guys will be back on the road in Pennsylvania coming up again this weekend. Now besides field hockey, you're also involved in the athletic department as one of the photographers for athletic sporting events. Has that always been a passion of yours? Yes, I've loved photography ever since I was a freshman in high school, so continuing that into my college career is huge for me. You know, I love the um, I love the communications office. I love being a part of that, being you know within the sport program. Here, so. And for all the students at Concordia, if you're looking for a job this this school year, perhaps helping out from a photography standpoint, check out the sports information department. Stop by their office, looking to employ those students uh, coming up this uh, school year. We're just underway, but uh, I think you'll you'll uh, vouch for it. It's it's a it's a fun part time job, oh, huh? For sure, I love it. <laughs> well, Sam, best of luck uh, the rest of this field hockey season. Thanks for your time. Thank you. When we come back on the Falcon Focus podcast, we switch gears to football. They get ready for their home opener. We'll talk with Associate Head Coach Jeff Walker. Stay tuned to the Falcon Focus podcast. You know, God never intended for us to live a comfortable life. He created us to go outside our comfort zones, to use our gifts and talents in the service of others, to live a you-first life in a me-first world. At Concordia University, it's our mission to prepare you for that path so that you stand apart from the crowd and live a life that's <laughs> short commercial. <laughs> Ten seconds are up. All right, good. Welcome back to the Falcon Focus podcast as we switch gears to football and being joined by Football associate head coach, special teams coordinator, wide receivers coach, recruiting coordinator, all that and more. Jeff Walker joining us. And, you know, I'm blown away. You've, you've been with the program on and off for close to two decades now. And, and you started off not only as a student assistant back in your college days at Whitewater, but then you were the first grad assistant for the Falcon football program back in the early 1990s. You go back to that time, you think grad assistant. What was the role back then versus maybe what it is today? Well, it's a little different. Um, I think the biggest change that has come about now is technology. Mm -hmm. And back then we had, to, I mean, we had three coaches total. We had a head coach, a full-time assistant, and the grad assistant. So everything that you have to do to run a football program, the three of us had to do. And when the head coach is being drawn into so many different areas, you have one full-time assistant who is also the SID um, that – you know, that puts a lot of work on, on, on me as a grad assistant. And I didn't have, you know, we had to stuff our own envelopes. We had to lick our own envelopes. We had to, you know, do all those things ourselves. So that, that part of it has changed um, quite a bit. We now have two graduate assistants. Um, the technology is so much different that they get to use nowadays. Um, but they do, a, they do a lot more coaching than I got to. So uh, those little things like that have made a difference. And, and I mentioned you were a student assistant during your time at Whitewater. So was coaching always, you know, something that interested you? And if so, how'd that come about? Yeah, I mean, after I got done playing, I just I wanted to stay in the game. I was a, going for physical education, health minor, and that, and it kind of fit. I enjoy the game of football. I learned a lot from the coaches that I played for and, and worked for. So um, I wanted to continue doing it. 
here at Concordia, you've had a you, you've sported many different hats. Uh, you know, one point coordinator on the defensive side, offensive side. Is that a tough adjustment, jumping from one side of the ball to the next, even though you're scheming against one or the other, but now being in charge of whether it be defense, offense, special teams? It's actually kind of exciting to be able to, to be able to make that move. I uh, I played defense in college. I coached defense for 19 years. I was coordinator for six or seven during that time. And when I was asked to move over to the offensive side, I was a little nervous at first, talked to a couple of my former coaches, asked them what they thought. They thought it was a good move. They said you can use your knowledge of being on the defensive side and apply it to now helping the offensive side go, you know, scheme against um, the defensive side, um, work the techniques against what the defensive guys are looking for. So the transition actually is was smoother than I anticipated. And we talk about wearing many different hats and, and just talking about your current role. How, how are you able to juggle all that? I mean, you're associate head coach, you're special teams coordinator, wide receiver coach, and on top of that, oh yeah, you're the recruiting coordinator. I mean, there's a lot going on. I mean, Tom Andrewman obviously is a, is a, a strength of yours. It has to be. <laughs> it has to be, especially with a family. Um, but the, the hardest one of them all is the equipment manager and trying to and trying to work that out. So, um, you know, hey, you just you prioritize. You know what you got, to, what's important at that time. You you get it done. You get help from your graduate assistants, you get help from other, from the head coach. Um, you got I got student managers that help me in the equipment area. Um, so there's a lot of people that, that help me uh, get that stuff done. So um, with four full-time staff guys recruiting, that helps that helps a ton in that area too. As mentioned, being with this program for close to a couple of decades, how have you seen maybe this program change over the years? And I know we're sitting in the student union that wasn't here, say, a handful of years ago, and then now you have the facilities to offer these football athletes. We do, and that's probably the biggest change is the facilities. Um, you know, I look back at our 2016, which was undefeated, and we were ranked top four in the country in, in our region, and we were, were going to host, but we couldn't because our field was underwater, the grass field was underwater, we didn't have the press box to facilitate an NCAA playoff game. So since then, you can see we've become a turf mm -hmm. field uh, school, and it has made a big difference in the recruiting aspect of being able to, you know, show off facilities like that and bring facilities like that. Um, and probably the other, the, the other thing then is the technology from then to now, working from VHS tapes to now having a huddle and being able to just download film and high quality film into the computer changed, changed things a lot. I'm glad you brought up that 2006 squad that ended up going 10-0 during the course of the regular season. One of those wins against nationally ranked North Central on their field in double overtime. They faced them again at Wisconsin Lutheran in the NCAA playoffs. What made that Hall of Fame squad so special, so effective, a 10-0 squad? I was just the, the camaraderie of the guys. I mean, that was a tight-knit group. Um, you know, we were, we were mainly Wisconsin, but we had mixtures of kids from Utah and Texas and Florida uh, that really gelled together as, as a group and, and played hard. And, I mean, it was a fun group to coach. It was, I know they had a blast that season. We all did. It uh, didn't end the way we wanted it to, but uh, that was, a, you know, that was a, a special year. Let's fast forward to now, this year's squad, training camp's over, game one's on the book, the victory at Finlandia. Your early impressions of this team? Well, I mean, it's very hard to win a college football game, period. And for this young group, and we are young, we have 100 freshmen and sophomores on this team. Um, to, to go on the road, an overnight trip in your first go-around of the season and come away with a, with a good victory, played hard, um, very, very good on offense, defense, special teams. Put it all together that first week. I mean, that's, that's a testament to, the, to that group of guys. I saw you guys had a pit stop at Lambeau Field on the way up We there. did. We did. And there was a, when you have that many young guys, there's a <laughs> lot of guys that, and we do have a lot of guys from out of, out of the state of Wisconsin that have never been to Lambeau Field. So it was a good experience for them. What do you make of the offensive side of the ball? You have quarterback Aaron Nixon. He's back from injury last year. You have Josh Sanders as far as wide receiving core goes. Jordan Edwards as far as you know, running back. I guess what do, you, what do you see out of this offense this season? Well, I mean, we've got a lot of veteran skill people that, that are, can be explosive, can make big plays. We've got a very young offensive line. I think we started four freshmen okay. this week. They're only going to get better. So as they get better to go along with the skill 
explosiveness that we have potential of, it could be a very good offense. I mean, overall, it's a young team when you look at the fact 95 of 115 that are within the program are of underclass status. So I'll ask you the same thing, though. Defensively, is it kind of the same, you know, when you look at the outlook? Is it just young and, you know, they're only going to be better as we go along? Or? It is. It's another young group. Uh, the defense works tirelessly with the scheme that they've got installed, and, and these guys will only get better each and every week as this goes on. One guy who's not young any longer. I mean, he's a senior. He's been with this program the last three years, and he's received all-conference accolades all three years. A guy you know well, defensive back, kicker, punter, and Jacob Mason. Might he go down as among the better punters, kickers that this program has seen, especially in recent history? Oh, he's you know, he's been very steady. Uh, very, very strong leg. Um, he came in, kind of saved us three years ago. We had two seniors, one punter, one kicker were seniors. We didn't have, he was coming in as a running back. We call. We asked him. We said, "Hey, can you do the kicking duties?" And he said, "Sure." And he didn't play running back for the first two years. He handled the kicking and punting duties, and you know he's taken on a bigger role, being a defensive back the last two years starting. So, you know, it's taken more of his time and more of his effort. And he's sore. He's you know mm-hmm. each time when he's got to go out there, he's more ti- he's tired when he goes out to kick, but he's handled it very well. Look at the schedule, and you know it's become an annual event. Finlandia, then Augsburg, and no different. Augsburg is up next, and that's a home game at Thomasini Stadium on Saturday at one o'clock. Take us through the the, the the preparation now. It's game week, Labor Day. I mean, I, I'm guessing you guys don't take the day off. You're prepping for the game on Saturday. So, so what goes into getting the guys ready between you know Sunday through kickoff on Saturday? Well, the nice thing is Labor Day or not Labor Day, um, we see it as a normal game week Mm -hmm. so um, preparation started Sunday already when watching the previous game the Finlandia game uh, the guys got back in got a little sweat going you know on Sunday to kind of work out the kinks from being sore from the game on Saturday Uh, we take Monday off with the guys you know they want to get a lift in they'll watch film but they don't have we don't have any meetings no practice on Monday and we'll get after it again here starting today Uh, Tuesday Wednesday Thursday we'll go full pads we'll be out in the field you know we'll install the game plan for the week and and we'll focus up and we expect to have a good week good game on Saturday and also note as far as the schedule goes some big home games coming up this year you got Lakeland the Cheese Bowl that's here on October the 6th you also have matchups against Eureka an old foe from the Illini Badger Football Conference in the NAC now for football only they come to town for the homecoming game and then you have the Luther Cup against Wisconsin Lutheran also here at Tommy Sydney Stadium Coach Walker best of luck this Saturday thanks a lot for your time I appreciate it Matt thanks We'll come back and we'll preview the week ahead. Falcon Focus Podcast. For the love of the game, that's what it's all about, they say. But for those of us who are Division III student athletes, it's more than that, a lot more. Sure, the game is important, but as we work so hard to build both mind and body, it's more about team and the schools and communities we represent. And for the many of us blessed with the strength to compete in sport at the college level, we understand that with what we were given comes a special obligation. An obligation not merely to work towards a personal best in the classroom or in the sport we love, but rather an obligation to help those who have their own special needs and whose love for the game is no less intense. That is why NCAA Division III teamed up with Special Olympics. For Special Olympics athletes, Victory belongs not only to those who first cross the line, but to all of those who compete and endure. They are challenged in ways we cannot imagine. They are survivors who test themselves harder and with greater joy than we will ever know. Since August of 2011, we and others from Division III campus communities have volunteered more than a quarter million hours, time away from the classroom and practice field, reaching across the country to coach and mentor Special Olympics athletes. And to learn, as we all do, that in giving, we receive so much more in return. Sport ennobles us, and in giving the gift of sport to those for whom it seemed an impossible dream, we are working to make this a better world. Help us keep that dream alive. Be part of it. Get involved. You can make a difference. Welcome back to the Falcon Focus Podcast as we look ahead at the schedule for the week. They will be in Falcon Athletics and Men's Golf. They're in action today on this Tuesday as we come to you live on Facebook Live. and They will be at the Aurora Double Gun event before Men's Golf also will be in action Friday and Saturday 
at the Carthage Tournament. Women's Tennis, they're at home against MSOE, looking to extend their home win streak. They're in action at 4 p.m. And then Saturday, they have home matchups against Aurora at 10 a.m. And the newest member of the NAC as well being Illinois Tech. That matchup gets underway at 2 p.m. In men's soccer, they'll, they return to the field for their second match coming up on Wednesday in De Pere, taking on St. Norbert. That's coming up at 6.30 p.m. Also note that men's soccer will be home against Northland at 1 o'clock on the Falcon Athletic Network if you cannot be at Fitting Field in person. And then Sunday at uw Platteville kickoff for that matchup against the Pioneers at 2 p.m. Women's soccer is in action on a Wednesday at UW-Whitewater kickoff under the lights at 7 p.m. Saturday will be in Illinois taking on Elmhurst at 3 p.m. Next at home on Monday, they'll be home Monday at Fitting Field. Women's golf. Friday, they will be at the Wisconsin Lutheran Triangular, and then Sunday, they get the NAC preview event in women's volleyball. They continue a stretch of 10 consecutive away from home to begin the year. Friday, they're at UW Stevens Point to take on the Stevens Point Pointers, and then Saturday, they will stay in Stevens Point and take on both Bethel along with St. Mary's. In men's cross country action, along with women's cross country, they'll be running a home event on Saturday. The women get underway at 11 a.m. The men will be running at 12 noon. Field hockey mentioned that they will be making their way to Pennsylvania. They'll be a, in a tournament that's going to be hosted by Wilson College. They get Sweet Briar in their first matchup. That, again, taking place on Saturday. And then a wait and see based on the results on Saturday, who they will face at the Wilson Invitational coming up on Sunday. Field hockey looking for their first ever 3-0 start. And, again, the three-year history of the program. And then finally, as mentioned, football will get their home schedule started. They get Augsburg with a 1 o'clock kickoff. Again, if you cannot be at Tomasini Stadium in person, we'll have the new multi-camera Falcon Athletic Network broadcast for you. Again, beginning right before 1 p.m. And then the kickoff between the Falcons and Augsburg coming up on a Saturday. If you will be here in person, be sure to check out. It's been announced that the NBC Sunday Night Football bus will be uh, making a stop here around 11 a.m., and uh, you can go on the bus, take a look inside, take some pictures as well as the bus eventually makes its way to Lambeau Field for Sunday night's Packer Chicago Bears contest. That will do it for our first edition of the Falcon Focus podcast for the 2018-19 school year. Again, we'll be with you every Tuesday live between 9.30 and 10 o'clock, and then you can watch the archive as well, part of the Podbean website. You can find the link at cuwfalcons.com. Thanks to all involved. Matt Middle saying so long, and have yourself a great week. We'll talk to you again next Tuesday for the Falcon Focus podcast.